I want to discuss um, the concept of cascading in CSS. Um, CSS stands for cascading style sheets and what that means is if you look at how the browser interprets a CSS style it'll read a document from the top down. So let's say for example here we've defined body to be this kind of greenish color over here but if I later on in the document uh, whoops if I later on in the document give body a different color so why don't I say um, the second body declaration why don't I give it a background color of say blue and I apply it now what's gonna happen is that the uh, the final the the, the final result of that is going to be a blue background but if we still look at the code we see that hey we actually first defined it that green and then later on we defined it that blue and it's the cascade that says hey this later one is going to trump the previous one so that is in the external style sheet now in the order of the CSS cascade first it does external uh, it first it re reads the external CSS then it goes on to the embedded CSS so right now we have body defined as green then blue well what I'm gonna do is go into my source code my HTML page and I am gonna add some embedded style sheets um, I'm going to add a new style. I'm going to make sure it says this document. I'll do body. And when I hit OK, it says body is a st Oh, hold on. I didn't pick body over here. OK, because it's just a tag. And now for the background, I'm going to say color uh, red. And I'll apply it. <clears throat> of course, because of the CSS uh, cascade, when I refresh this, it's going to be red. Now, if I look over here, I see that in my main document, I have first it defined as blue, as green, then later in the cascade, it's defined as blue. But once the browser finishes reading the external document, it's going to move over to the HTML document, and it's going to catch this body attribute, and then say, "Hey." I want it to be this color and that's going to be the final color that it renders out of those three. Now that's the CSS cascade. There is one way to combat this and that's by using the important attribute. Now I'm going to show you. So we know that the final uh, body color that that we set this to was red and that first it's going to go green then blue then red but if I use this tag so I'm gonna go back to this green and right before the semicolon and after the color green I'm gonna put a space and oh, look at that Dreamweaver already has this uh, ready to go over here as an attribute I'm gonna put exclamation point important and I could just finish it up and look at that important is an attribute that now will have it override any other style so basically important says I don't care what style it is um, I don't care how else the body gets redefined you need to set it to what I've set as important now clearly if you set all the rest of the uh, other elements to important as well it's gonna end up being red because that was the final thing but important is one way to make sure that it stands out regardless of, of what that of what happens now you have to use important very carefully if you're designing something from the ground up you shouldn't be using important rather I most often use important when I'm working with someone else's style sheets um, if you look at complex pages um, you'll see that oftentimes they have tons and tons of different style sheets uh, associated to them because they're coming in from all over the place if we look at the CSS tricks website we see that 
all over the place we have look we have normal right here we have normalize.css we got style.css we got home.css um, anyway we have styles coming in from all sorts of places it, with all these styles coming in you can easily get lost in what you're doing so you use the important tag as a way to kind of make sure you're targeting the right element because if you use important for the body and the color actually comes out and when you take it off it doesn't then you know that part of your CSS problems of things not rendering the way they're supposed to is due to the cascade and nothing else so you have to dig a little deeper but point of the story is CSS is cascading it starts with the external style sheets and it ends all the way with inline styles in this example I shown you how an external document will anything in there will get uh, trumped by a embedded style but then again if you want to make sure that one style takes effect you could use the important attribute to kind of force it to use a particular style regardless of its position in the cascade